This week on Maker Update, animated ferro fluid, fabricating a land speeder, advanced animatronic eyes, Adam Savage hardware rack, workbench mods from Laura Kampf, and shrinking molds with the Craftsman. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I think there's just something about the year-end deadline that makes all of the cool projects jump out at the last minute. There are so many cool things to talk about. Let's get started with my pick for the project of the week. You know what you've been missing in your life? A ferrofluid display. Fortunately, the guys at Applied Procrastination have a project they call Fetch. It's a container of magnetic fluid and salt water mounted in front of a grid of 252 electromagnets. The project documentation and code is all on GitHub with PCB files and a build diary all on Hackaday. They've also made a bunch of videos that you can find on their YouTube channel that offer a deeper look at each aspect of the project. Ultimately, the code for Fetch runs on a Teensy 3.6 board connected to a custom controller board for the electromagnets. The animations are created in a free pixel art editor called Asprite, which is then parsed by a Python script. While there's a lot of technical challenges they had to overcome, what I think is really interesting is how difficult it was to create a good ferrofluid container. It clumps, it gets rusty, it tends to get stuck to the glass. They point to a great instructable by Roger Carr that provides many of the crucial details for working with ferrofluid and enclosing it. It's not as easy as you'd think, but the results look amazing. More projects, just in time for the new Star Wars, Colin Furs has a video out showing how he converted a golf cart into a full-scale land speeder. It's actually refreshing to see Colin push a little out of his comfort zone for this one. There's a lot of metal fabrication, steel tube bending, welding. He had to buy and learn how to use an English wheel to make all the compound curves on the outside of the land speeder. The end result looks really cool though with lots of little details. He also has a follow-up video where he tries to fit actual jet engines into the back and mirror panels around the bottom. Go check that out. And in my continuing obsession with Will Cogley's animatronic designs, he has a new eye mechanism up that expands on the ideas in the simple mechanism we saw a month ago. This one is stronger, more compact, and a little lighter. Instead of an all 3D printed design, this version requires some small hardware, some ball links, and push rods. To drive the six servos, you'll need an Arduino and an Adafruit servo driver board. The end result looks great, and if you ever wanted to get into animatronics, Will has really spoiled us this year with some great guides. Now for some tools and tips. Some real heavyweights this week, Adam Savage has a new one day build video on how he redesigned and fabricated a shelving system to organize his inventory of hardware. His old system was a two-sided cart on wheels that he just never took out and rarely turned around. For the new system, he made the cart one-sided and shrunk the capacity of each bin so that he could fit more options in the same space. On her YouTube channel, Laura Kampf talks about why she prefers using stage platforms as work tables. To challenge herself, she sees how many ways she can optimize one of these tables for dropping clamps and lights, and a rail system around the edges for tacking on power strips or anything else she needs. The Craftsman has a great video on how to grow or shrink a silicon mold. As an example, he casts a mold of a figurine and makes a version that's bigger and one that's smaller. The trick is, in both cases, using mineral spirits, but you have to watch the video to see how he's doing it. It kind of blew my mind. During November, as part of my Makevember challenge, I made a series of origami experiments where I 3D printed the folding pattern directly onto the paper and then glued another sheet of paper over that pattern. I thought it turned out pretty cool, and you can see what I made over on the Maker Project Lab Instagram and Twitter accounts. I'm hoping to document the process in an instructable before the year is out, but if you're curious to do something similar, the patterns I'm using come from a book by Paul Jackson called Folding Techniques for Designers. You can find a link for it in the description. Finally, in the latest issue of Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales, there's a tip on copying complex shapes with a tick stick, a recommendation for an inexpensive multi-bit driver, why you should sharpen a shovel, how to use a $99 pressure pot to squeeze the air bubbles from your casting projects. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest video on the basics of reading a schematic. The video shows how a circuit can be described as a series of symbols that, once you get the hang of it, you can use to get a basic understanding of how a circuit design functions. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. And if YouTube's not your usual hangout, you can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically each week. 
I'll have one more episode for you next week, but then I'll be taking a break until the new year comes around. So happy holidays, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.